Part 1. Inside Arkham Asylum, not all residents longed for a life on the outside. For them, solitude was a refuge. For Victor Freeze, solitude was the only reality. He always had to be confined in his icy cell or in his special suit. His horrible history as Mr. Freeze had earned him a lengthy visit at the asylum. It also attracted a most unusual visitor. From the shores off Arkham Asylum, an armored mass of steel rose out of the sea and headed toward the asylum grounds. No barriers or brute force could stop the robot. Freeze could feel the shock waves from his cell. He peeked out the window, only to see that his tranquil existence was about to be shattered. Interesting. Inside the Batcave, Batman and Robin studied pictures taken by Arkham Asylum security cameras. You've got to give Mr. Freeze credit, Robin joked. That's the most original breakout this year. But Batman noticed the fear on Freeze's face and realized it was no escape stunt. <coughs> Freeze was taken against his will, he said, and obviously by someone with expertise in robotics. Robin suggested they visit their own robotics expert, Carl Rossum. Carl Rossum was a curious little man. He preferred the company of his artificial friends over real people. But when Batman and Robin knocked at his door, he was happy to help. Greetings, Dynamic Duo. I'm your biggest fan. What is it? I just want to help. Just want to help. Just want to help. Poor little critter. I never could get his programming right. Cute toy, Carl. You know I'm out of the robot business, Batman. All I make anymore are little friends to keep me company. Like Tiny here? Well, if it isn't old M9. It's one of yours? Not really. I once created a smaller prototype for Grant Walker. The guy who builds those theme parks? Yeah, I was one of Walker's original visioneers, constructing and programming the animatronic figures he used in his park attractions. Though it looks like old Grant's boys pumped up the design a bit. I'm wondering how improved these robots are, and why one of them was sent to kidnap Mr. Freeze. Batman showed him a picture of the robot that broke into Arkham. Rossum recognized it immediately. He had designed the M9 prototype for Grant Walker, a billionaire theme park mogul. <coughs> Meanwhile at sea, Freeze didn't know if he had been kidnapped by an enemy or rescued by a friend. The M9 robot that held him was cruising toward an island. It was Grant Walker's city on water, Oceana. Inside, Walker looked on as his M9 climbed into a special cold chamber. The robot opened up, dropping Freeze at its feet. Freeze stood up. A spectacular view of Oceana surrounded him. Impressive, he offered. Walker had impossible plans for Oceana. Impossible, unless he got Mr. Freeze on his side. But Freeze said he couldn't care less about Oceana. Walker had studied his captive well, though. He knew precisely what Freeze did care about. He decided to save his secret until later. As Freeze was led away, Mr. Johnson, Walker's assistant, informed his boss that a boat was approaching. <coughs> Dispatch our usual deterrence, Walker said coolly. Out on the ocean, the bat boat raced toward Oceana. 
Robin couldn't believe that someone as famous as Walker would kidnap Freeze. But Batman knew how obsession could push a man to extreme acts, especially a rich man. Suddenly the radar showed three approaching objects. Above and underwater, the Batboat tried to dodge Walker's missiles. For a while, it succeeded. Intruder threat has been neutralized, sir. Excellent. Part 2 Underwater, at the foot of Oceana, Batman and Robin made their entrance with a blowtorch. Inside, Walker had already put Freeze back into a new, chilling suit. But Mr. Freeze was not grateful. I think you'll find that suit is a perfect duplicate of your original. Automatic temperature control, increased cybernetic strength, even the cold gun works. Yes, logically I should do the same to you. Just hear me out, please. As I said, I've studied you and your work. Do you realize that in your frozen state, you'll age much slower than an ordinary human? You're practically immortal, my friend. Yes, eternal life trapped in this wretched shell. What a miserable joke. In the suit or in a cell, Freeze's condition was a curse. But it was exactly what Walker wanted for himself. Freeze had finally met a man whose heart was as numb as his. He angrily lifted Walker by his collar. You want to live like me, Freeze growled, abandoned and alone. Forever a prisoner in a world you can see but never touch. Freeze dropped Walker to the ground and walked away. Old and infirm as you are, I'd trade a thousand of my frozen years for your worst day. Walker grinned. Actually, I have another kind of swap in mind. With that, he revealed his secret bargaining chip. And this time, Freeze could not refuse to help Walker. I was a major investor in Goth Goth Corp a few years back and put up some money for their cryogenics program. I trust you know the young lady behind the glass. My wife. The Goth Corp execs think she perished in the fire, but my men got her out. I have the technology to restore her, my friend. All you have to do is grant my wish. Very well. Under Oceana's dome, Batman and Robin surfaced from a waterway. Crowds of smiling Oceanans passed by, heading toward an assembly. Batman and Robin eluded Walker's security hovercraft, then climbed to the top of a tower to get a better look. They could see that Walker was the worst sort of lunatic. He wanted to extend his own life while destroying others. On a huge video screen, Walker comforted his followers. They would all be warm and snug inside Oceana, as the rest of the world was hit by his deep freeze, he said. In five years, they would get out to roam the Earth and start a new master race. He's a madman, Batman said to Robin. Suddenly, the patrolling hovercraft discovered them. The machine's arms grasped, punched, and ripped at the crime fighters. Even with their skills and weapons, Batman and Robin were no match for the rustling robots. Soon they had to give up and listen to Walker's whole horrific speech. Whoa!
Yeah, big crashers. We've seen your insane vision of the future, Walker. My world will have no crime, violence, or pain. You can add free will to that list, too. A small price to pay for order. Your order. For your select few. Excuse me, but I fail to see the problem with that. Then, like puppets, they were taken below Oceana. They learned that Mr. Freeze was apparently helping Walker after all. said or promised you, but you can't help him go through with this plan. I have no choice. Part 3 Batman and Robin couldn't budge from their icy bonds. They couldn't stop Walker from turning himself into a horror, just like Mr. Freeze. They could only watch as Walker writhed, twisted, and jolted until the freezing process was over. Right, sir. <laughs> this takes a little getting used to. Walker couldn't wait to launch his chilling global attack, but Mr. Freeze only cared about saving his wife. Mr. Freeze gazed at his love and the tank that kept her alive. Meanwhile, Batman tried to talk Freeze out of helping Walker. He described a frozen world, a dead world that Mr. Freeze was helping to create, a world that his wife would hate. Silence! Freeze shouted blasting Batman and Robin backward. Freeze looked at his wife again. Forgive me, he said to her at last. Then he turned away from her and set Batman and Robin free. Walker was itching to fire his cold blast cannon. He was pleased to see Mr. Freeze enter the room, but Mr. Freeze wasn't there to help. He fired his freeze gun at a line of Walker's robot workers. Then Batman and Robin burst into the control room. Robots and computers and ice chunks exploded everywhere. Ah, you've come to join us as our own, my friend. Wait, what are you doing? When it was over, Mr. Freeze exposed Oceana's main power core. But before he could overload it, Walker hit him from behind. This is my dream, Walker shouted, his voice distorting. This is my vision. I cheated death to make this real. Freeze had heard enough from the old man. He locked Walker in a chunk of ice and reached for the main power core. After he turned the knob, alarms and buzzers rang out. Mr. Freeze turned on the video camera. Under Oceana's dome, his face appeared on the towering screen. He told Walker's followers to leave the island immediately. His warning was followed by violent proof. Attention all residents of Oceana. Your city is doomed. If you value your lives, you will evacuate now. That is all. Now! 
buildings began to tremble. Huge ice spikes grew from the ground. The end of Oceana was near. Before he left, Freeze added more ice to Walker's fateful prison. Walker's followers evacuated in droves. Batman and Robin prepared to leave, but Mr. Freeze refused to go with them. His wife was still inside. Batman's bat rope was not strong enough to restrain Freeze. I'm the least of your worries, he told Batman. Then he iced Robin. Take the boy and go. Back inside, Mr. Freeze stood by his tragic wife as everything collapsed around them. In their evacuation boat, Batman rescued Robin as the city on water exploded. Bits and pieces of Oceana sank to the ocean floor. Descending among the fractured remnants of his illusion, the murderous walker fumed. Afterward, in the Batcave, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson recovered from their adventure. Out of their costumes, they now enjoyed warm clothes and Alfred's hot cocoa. Dick thought of Walker. The old man would be encased forever in a chilling, twisted prison of his own making. Bruce thought of Mr. Freeze. He wondered where he was and if their paths would ever cross again. Far away, floating in a watery field of icebergs, Mr. Freeze also thought of someone. She was his love, whom he could see, but never touch.